This video will quickly review the process by which to use an API from a real-time database to pull information into Microsoft Excel and build business intelligence reports that allow you to do dynamic analysis of the data that you've just pulled in. The data for this demonstration will come from the Seattle Real-Time Fire 911 Calls Open Data Database. This data is made available for public use by the City of Seattle, and you can find it at data.seattle.gov. Uh, what we'll be looking at today is this data, which is supposedly updated every five minutes, and the ability to interactively update the data that you're using in Excel throughout the day in a very timely manner. So looking at this data set, which is made available to the public through a Socrata portal, uh, you can see that it's maintained by the Seattle Fire Department. There's some additional information about it uh, here in the About section. If you hit the Export tab, you'll see that there's some different ways to export the data. You can download a copy of the data in its entirety uh, in different file formats, but what we'll be using today is the API. Uh, the API is a URL which you can use to query the database, and there's additional documentation available from Socrata on how to use their specific uh, API, the Soda Consumer API, uh, and you can go through that documentation and learn how to formulate your own queries uh, to be used uh, when querying the database. Here in Excel 2013, you'll see that the Power Query plugin has been enabled. That's a free plugin from Microsoft. And if we go ahead and select Get External Data from Web, we can then paste in the URL for the API query that we're using. Uh, as you can see here, we're entering a uh, API query that's going to hit that real-time 911 database and it's going to pull in the most recent 300 events uh, where the date time is not null. Uh, and that's all that we'll bring in. And once you hit OK, you'll go to the Power Query application. And at this point, you can do a little bit of uh, ETL on the data in order to determine what you want to bring in, what you don't. So for example, if report location is not necessary, you can remove that column. Uh, there's several other things you can do with Power Query. A uh, quick search on YouTube or Google will give you some good instructional videos and uh, blog articles on how to do that. And uh, once you're finished, you can go ahead and hit Done, and it will pull the information into Excel in a very quick and timely manner. So as you can see, we're now here in Excel, and the Power Query data is loading. And because we only pulled in 300 rows, it loaded very quickly. Uh, so now you can see we have that information in a pivot table and we can move up to Power Pivot, uh, which is a data modeling tool which comes with Excel 2013 and we can add it to the data model and start modeling the data for business intelligence reports. As with Power Query, Power Pivot has quite a bit of documentation out there on the internet at uh, blogs, uh, YouTube videos, uh, different Microsoft websites that provide uh, training and documentation on how to build out data models. Um, I won't go into that here since we're keeping this brief. Um, all that I've added to this particular data model is a time dimension so that we can start segmenting the data by hour of the day, AM, PM, and things like that. Uh, moving back to Excel and looking at the Power Query pivot table that we've brought into the sheet, uh, you can see over on the right hand side that there is a refresh option. Notice that the most recent one that I have brought into Excel was pulled in yesterday and the incident number ends in 80003. If we refresh the information, uh, Power Query will reach out to that real-time 911 database and it'll pull in the most recent data that's available in that database. So now you can see that the most recent incident number is 80260 and it's coming in from today and that's a GMT time so it needs to be adjusted for Seattle local time uh, which was done in Power Pivot. Once you've updated the data which is in the pivot table from the Power Query uh, query, uh, you can then update all of the tables in the Power Pivot model. And from that point, you can then move to Excel and you can start building either Excel reports or you can build uh, Power View reports. And we'll go ahead and wait for this to open. And when the Power View report opens, you'll see that it's a tool which is available within Excel that optimizes the ability to create visually stimulating reports. So now here you'll see that we have a report for the most recent 300 Seattle Fire 911 calls. 
Uh, we can now shift the filter to look at the ones that have just happened today. And you'll see that uh, basically we have a filter on the type of calls. We have the incident count by hour and type. And then you also have a map to see where these different incidents are happening. So I see a lot of uh, green dots there and you can see those are medic response. This one down here is aid response. Over here is a, another medic response. So let's go ahead and filter for just medic response. And you'll see that we then have those incidents on the map. So you can see where they happened, what the address was, and then you can also see what hour of the day they happened. So one was four in the morning, two were seven in the morning, uh, one was at eight, and four were at nine. Uh, if you wanted to drill into a particular hour, so for example, the seven o'clock hour, you can double click on that bar, and then you'll see the actual addresses where those incidents occurred. Uh, you can also move back up to a higher level, you can clear the filters, and then you can move back to the high level. So effectively, within a couple of hours, you can put together an interactive business intelligence report that allows you to interact with data and to reach back and quickly refresh the underlying data uh, into your data model. So throughout the day, if you'd like to monitor the most recent 300 Seattle Fire 911 calls, uh, you can go to Power Query, refresh the query, and then take a look at the most recent information that is in that database in order to start doing additional analysis. For more information, there's a corresponding blog article at our website at opendatabits.com, and there are other articles which can help you in your quest to use and leverage the power of open data.